Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, if you're on Facebook, check out our community group. Just look for a daily Bible podcast under groups. We would love to have you there. It's where we're going deeper. We're talking about what we're learning, what we're reading, sharing photos. So make sure you come and be a part of that. It's a fun group, and it's a fun group that people are sharing what they're also what they're learning and their research, like some are going deeper. And that Mm -hmm. is so encouraging to me because it's not about what you and I bring to the table, Trish. It's also about what others are bringing to the table. And it's like a community. It's a truly a community. And there's so, I don't know. I've just been so encouraged to be reading in community. And um, so, yeah, go become a part of that Facebook group. Okay, so today we are reading Mark 5, 1 through 20, Matthew 8, 28 through 34, Luke 8, 26 through 39, Mark 5, 21 through 43, Matthew 9, 18 through 26, and Luke 8, 40 through 56. Okay, so... First off today, Jesus comes into contact with an evil possessed man, and this man was crazy and could no longer be restrained. I mean, just think about that. I mean, he was, he was crazy. This man had been living here um, for a while as he came into contact with Jesus, and he had not lived around people at all. He could not be around people. Mm -hmm. And yet here's the thing that I caught as I was reading this passage is that he knew who Jesus was. Yeah. Well, the spirits inside him knew who Jesus was. Yeah. 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 And so he calls Jesus by name. He says, Jesus, son of man of, or son of the most high God. And the ESV study Bible says that the man's falling down at Jesus, at Jesus's feet may indicate an involuntary submission of the demons Mm. to Jesus's greater power, or that the man himself longed to be free of the demonic influence. But no matter what, he threw his feet at, or he threw himself at the feet of Jesus. And so Jesus frees the man and he sends the many, many evil spirits that is inside this guy. He sends them into a herd of pigs and the entire herd plunges down a steep hillside. And of course, this is something that I remember in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. Um, But this scared, this scared many of the townspeople. And before they didn't seem to mind having this demon possessed, tormented man in their midst, yet they did mind having Jesus around. Mm -hmm. And so they asked him to leave. And what did Jesus do? Well, he does. He does. The, The man wants to go with Jesus And Jesus tells him to return to his family and tell them all that the Lord has Mm -hmm. done. And, and, and you'll notice the next couple of sections in our reading, Matthew and Luke, um, we have some differences in this passage. Matthew said that there were two men. And then in Luke's account, it seems that the man wasn't as violent as the man in Mark's account, but, but also notice the things that were the same in our reading, the man or men acknowledge that Jesus was the, was the son of God. The demons were cast out of the men into pigs. The crowd was scared of Jesus and they asked him to leave, but Jesus healed the man and he went home proclaiming the good news and the great things that Jesus had done. Yeah. And I don't think it's really like, even though like one mentioned one man, one mentioned two, it's just a different way to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Um, example, like my friend Twyla and I, we started Hope Pregnancy Center in Kalispell, Montana. So some stories tell about me and Twyla. Some, if I'm just doing an article for if someone's interviewing me, Trisha started this. It's not like I started it alone, but the focus was on just right. me for that one article. So um, it's not that that there's any conflict. It's just how the storytelling goes mm-hmm. with that 
popular writer. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. All right. So then we have, um, a, for, for, well, first of all, before we jump there, the whole evil spirit of the, of going into the pigs and off the cliff. It's just like, yeah, they were scared. But then they also said that they were scared to see the, the man in the, his right mind. Mm-hmm. That was, they'd never seen that before. And so it's all unexplained stuff. Folks. So for sure, word is getting out. But yeah. As we continue on with the next passages, Ma- Mark, Matthew, and Luke all have the same stories, and it's the healing of the woman with a bleeding disorder, and then the raising of Jairus' daughter. So Jairus was a synagogue leader, and he approaches Jesus pleading for the healing of his dying daughter. Um, and so on the way to go and heal this little girl, a woman who's been bleeding for 12 years touches Jesus' garment, believing that doing so would heal her. And she instantly is healed. And so Jesus perceives that the power has gone out for him and he commends the women's faith. And remember, you know, just know, we remember when, when people are bleeding or women, but they'd have to go away from camp. They weren't supposed to be around for pe- with people. And so the fact that she came into the crowd and touched Jesus is like she, she was trusting she was going to be healed because that was like a big no in their society for her to even approach him. Mm. Um, and then Jerry's daughter dies and Jesus assures him that, uh, no, she's just sleeping. And then he goes to the house where the, he raises the girl from the dead and he instructs astonished witnesses to tell no one and to give her something to eat. So let's picture this like dear friends of ours and a couple of, from our church, they both lost teen boys this summer in unexpected accidents. And they're walking right now through such pain and grief. I've talked to both these moms um, in depth recently, and I can imagine the joy that they would have felt to have their child back again. Mm. This girl was, was dead. Like, and she must have mm-hmm. been sick for a while, but like that joy would be so overwhelming. And so, word is going to get out when all these things are happening. Some people like they don't understand. Some people are like, first of all, this woman, we know her story because she's in all three gospels, that issue of blood for sick for so long. And then this little girl rising from the dead, like Jesus had so much compassion and was bringing healing. But people were like, what is going on? (laughs) I've just been like the overall thing. What is happening now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what is happening? And it's Jesus's power. I mean, in these stories that we read today, the power of Jesus, Mm -hmm. even, even just of the woman who just touched, touched the, you know, the bottom part of his, of his cloak, of his robe. I mean, just the power that was with him, Mm -hmm. you know, it, it makes me want to be with him more. You know, we've, you toy, you coined the phrase, we, we really need to make this our phrase for the year with God. We need to be with him. And, um, and that's what we saw. We saw the power with Christ um, in these stories today. Okay. Well, we need to take a break. We need to hear from our sponsor. And when we come back, we'll have the word of the day. Stay tuned. All right, the word of the day is transformation. And so it's a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. And there's a lot of different mm. words that went into transformation, but there's a physics definition that I really liked. It says Ooh. an induced or spontaneous change of one element into another by nuclear process. Okay, I don't know if Jesus mm. had nuclear processes going on, but there is a lot of transformation there. So the transformations we read about today were not just a shift, but mm-hmm. complete changes from one element to another, mm-hmm. from insane to sane, from sick and untouchable to healed, from dead to alive. Like that is complete transformation. It's not like, oh, you're just a little bit better. Like it, it wasn't like she was a little bit better, but she still was plagued by whatever illness for the rest of her life. Like, no, it's complete transformation transformation and that demonic man ravaged by the legion of spirits lived in insanity and chaos like i can't imagine his mind must just have been so confused he must have been so overwhelmed and you know we don't know if he 
uh, like you said, kneeled before him. It was a submission to the demons or he was wanting Jesus, like surrendering to Jesus to get the demons out of him. But Jesus transformed. And I can imagine just peace and that sanity mm. being there. Um, his whole being was restored. He was restored also, transformed back to the town. Just, he was in his mind again, in his right mind. And then, um, you know, all those who saw it feared it, but they they probably couldn't even believe the change. And then that woman who was untouchable, isolated, impure because of that bleeding, just that act of faith, she transitioned from enduring sickness to wholeness. Um, her dignity and humanity were restored. Not just her body was healed. She was transformed and able to enter into the society. Again, with the man with the evil spirits, he was in his right mind and be able to be in um, back in society. And then Jairus's daughter, the ultimate transformation from dead to life. And she was lost to the clutches of death, brought back to life by a touch of Jesus. And Jesus, with Jesus, like radical transformation is possible. Mm. It's not like we could just, okay, let's pray to be a little better. Like, no, God like wants to completely transform us, turn us into new beings and have it be um, something that we never were before. We are mm. spiritually his. We have a place in heaven. We are God's children. It's not like, well, I think I'll follow Jesus. So I could get a little better. <laughs> no, he wants to completely transform us. You know, um, I'm just thinking, I, I love that definition that you came, that you found the physics definition that the induced or spontaneous change of one element into another by a nuclear process. Because when you think about that, like where my mind went was talking to somebody who has been um, an alcoholic or who has been mm -hmm. on drugs or even prescription drugs and their body craves that their body craves those chemicals and they have to continually feed their body those chemicals to, in order to continue moving forward in life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just, I, I know, I know of, of someone, um, who has been transformed, who was at that breaking point on alcohol, the life had, their lives had fallen apart. I mean, a divorce had happened. Kids were like, no, he's not my dad anymore. I mean, just so many, so many things had happened in his life. There was nothing left. And God met him and he would say it's underneath the air conditioner in his, in his living room. And God met him there. And from that time on, mm -hmm. there was never a want of another drink. There mm -hmm. was never a want of anything else to fill the void that, so, I mean, when you're talking about the nuclear, the nuclear process or whatever, I mean, God went in and transformed his life. Like he went in and transformed the, the demon possessed man. Like he transformed and brought back to life the Jairus's daughter. I mean, just all of that. He, like, he totally transformed this guy. And, 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 and so it's taken a while because to put his life back together again, because no one believes the transformation mm -hmm. or they want to know that it's for sure happening, but still that transformation to watch him and watch from the outside looking mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. is so incredible to mm -hmm. see how God came in and transformed him. And it, I mean, transformation, I think for us looking from the outside, looking in, we're like, really? Did that happen? Can God really do that? And yet, if we're that person that that happened to, we're like, yeah, he can. It's it's beyond, it's mind blowing mm -hmm. because he does, he has, because Christ has that power. Yeah. And it does take the, I mean, the woman had to approach Jesus, the demon possessed man falling on his knees before Jesus. Um, they, you know, they have to come to Jesus. And I think so many times we're so worried that we can't have that transformation that we just don't even go to Jesus. <laughs> like we try to fix it ourselves. We're such a, a self-help fix it society. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, actually, uh, I could just give it to Jesus. And it's, there might still be hard days or there might be memories of how we used to be, but Jesus can bring that transformation, but we have to humble ourselves and we have to seek him and we have to desire to change. We have to want 
that transformation. Um, and then Jesus is like, okay, I'm here. I can help you. And I think too, once you, once you go through that transformation, there's, 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 like you said, you, you, we need to say, okay, God, like open our hands and say, I surrender. This is on, this is you, this is all you God. So change me. And, and then afterwards, you know, the cool thing is, is God sent this guy back to community or yeah. Christ sent this guy back to community and said, go, go to your family and friends and tell them. So mm -hmm. even though they were probably amazed and a little leery, they were there to help him put his life back together again. There is so like community. We started off today talking about how important community is while we're reading through the Bible, but community is so mm -hmm. important in everything. It's so important in this transformation. Like, of course, God does it all, but it takes people around us with flesh on to love us and continue helping us step forward every single second. Yeah, so good. I love community. We just started back into a small group. We haven't been involved in one in years at our church just because we've had all the kids and caring for grandma and it just wasn't a good season. And this year we're like, no, we're getting back in community. And every week when we get together and just meet this week, we we're in my living room and we will rotate around, but it's just like being around these people and just sharing our ups and our downs. And then mm -hmm. people will check on each other. It just makes such a huge difference. And uh, yeah. one thing that one of the guys, uh, his name is also John, like my husband, but he said is like, we're talking about prayer. And when we pray, like, don't be afraid to pray for the biggest thing that you could pray for that person. Mm -hmm. Well, with Jerry's daughter, the biggest thing was for her to be alive alive yeah. the the sane man or insane man the biggest prayer would be for him to be sane again the woman with the issue of blood the biggest thing would be to, for her to be completely healed and i think sometimes in our prayer life like well we'll just pray that um we could build that relationship and that we could understand and be able to handle the insanity <laughs> Well, no, like maybe we could just pray for total healing. Um, sometimes it happens quickly, like Jesus touched these people. Um, sometimes it may not happen immediately, but I think that's a good reminder. Like when Jesus did transformation, it was all the way mm -hmm. and it can be all the way. And mm -hmm. maybe we could just start praying, praying bigger. It's just encouraged me to pray bigger um, for some of the people in my life. Um, because I love them and I love them. I would love complete transformation for them. Well, can you do that for us today? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and I, I thank you for transformation. I mm -hmm. thank you that you can take what is broken and chaotic mm -hmm. and dead and unwhole and um, diseased, and you can make all things new, Lord. I pray for each of us. Um, I pray for those who have not completely turned over their lives for you. I pray that they may just be willing to lift themselves up or bring themselves to their knees either way um, and say, Lord, transform me. I want complete transformation. I believe in you and I trust you, Lord. And also I pray for um, those in our lives who need transformation. Lord, help us to be willing to pray the big prayers, Lord, to pray for complete healing, complete um, change, Lord. I know that that's what you desire for them, Lord. And we, we just bring these things to you and we thank you and praise you that you are the God who can bring transformation. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly Bible reading uh, plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow, get out your pencils again. Tomorrow we are reading Matthew 9, 27 through 34, Mark 6, 1 through 6, Matthew 13, 53 through 58, Matthew 9, 35 through 38, Mark 6, 7 through 13, Matthew 10, 1 through 42, and Luke 9, 1 through 6. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find great podcasts that are going to encourage you 
in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.